from Godzilla to Mothzilla. Now get ready for Baby Zilla in cinemas near you, Friday 21st. In today's video, we're going to take a look at how to giantify ourselves and make us look huge. To get started, you want to make sure you have the person that you're going to put in the image, the background, and if you want to, you can even have objects. For example, I'm going to use a plane. If you go to File, New, and then in here, set it to 1920 by 1080, 75 resolution and RGB color, transparent, press OK. Next up, you want to drag in your background into a new section. So if you create a new project and then left click on it to turn it into a layer, move it over to your project. And then you want to hold Alt and scroll down to zoom out. You also want to press Control T to resize it. You want to also hold Shift and drag the corner in. This will maintain the aspect ratio, keeping it nice and high quality and making it look original. Next up, what you want to do is you want to get your person and we're going to cut this out. Now, if you wanted to, you can go with the magnetic lasso tool. I've got a video on my channel to show you how to do it. Now, I like to do it with a pencil because you can get a lot more out of it. So let's just zoom in and we're going to start off with the bottom. So we're going to start off with the shoe. If you don't know how to use the pencil, it's really simple. You click once and then you click again. This will create your point. Now, if you normally click, it'll give you a straight line. If you press Control, Alt and Z to undo and left click and drag it, this will give you a curved line. So you can pretty much curve it around the object. So starting here, we're going to go all around it. Now, another thing I forgot to mention is once you do create the curved one, you also need to make sure that you hold Alt and then click on it to get rid of it, because if you don't, it will create a duplication of the other one. If you want, you can scroll side to side by holding control and then using the scroll wheel to go up and down. This moves left and right. And then to go up and down, it's just up and down with the scroll wheel. So now we've got to the more tricky bit, which is the hair. This can take a long time to do it, especially if you're going to use the selection tool or some other tool, for example, the pen tool. If you wanted to, you can go with the background eraser tool, which is right here. And that is what I'm going to show you how to use. For now, all you got to do is just go around it and then we're going to sort this out in a little bit. So just go around it and get back to here. So we can just carry on doing what we was doing. And then all you got to do near the end is when the circle comes up, just left click on it and then it'll connect it all up. So next thing to do is to actually make this into a selection. You go to the selection button right here, set this on zero and then press OK. You want to left click on the background to turn it into a layer and then you want to zoom out a little bit. So if you hold alt and scroll down and this is the easy part. All you got to do is press control J. This will duplicate the image and remove the background. So as you can see, we need to first of all, create a solid. So if you go down here, create a solid color, set this one to red, and then you want to also press control J to get yourself a duplicate of the image. And the way that I'm going to show you how to do is the eraser tool, which is right here. So if you right click on it and then go to the middle one, there is something called background eraser tool. We're going to first of all start off with light colors. So if you set the size to 125, put it on 80% hardness, have the spacing on one, have it on zero degrees for the angle, 100% roundness, size off, and then pen pressure. Next up, you click on the middle one. Next up, you want to set the limits to this contiguous and then set the tolerance on 40. We're going to start off with 40 and then go around it. Make sure that this one is ticked, so protect foreground color. And now you can actually start doing it. You want to first of all, actually click on the background. So if you left click and drag it, 
this will remove the background. Now this will only start off with the light colors. So you can go around it like so. Next up, we're going to swap the colors over. So we're going to put black on the bottom and white on the top and then set the size back to normal. So if you use the square bracket, the end one to make it bigger back to 125. And then once again, same as last time, click on it. You might have to do it twice and just go around it like so. And it will just keep removing layers and layers of the background. Once again, swap over back to the light colors and then do it again. And then finally, we're going to go back to the dark colors and then remove the dark colors. Like so. Going to try white one more time to get rid of the fuzziness. And as you can see, it's slowly removing the background. We're going to set this on a lower tolerance. So let's go with like 10. And then get this bit here as well. That's looking not too bad. Well, that is what we can get so far out of it. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the normal eraser and then just pretty much fix it up. You want to make sure it's on this one. So 100% hardness and then just fix it up like so. Next up, we're going to remove the edge a little bit. So if you hold control, left click on it, this will select it all, then go to selection, invert the selection, get your razor tool, and then set it on feathering. So it has the hardness on zero, and then just pretty much go around it like so, just to fix it up. And then press Ctrl D once you've done. And there we go. So once we actually put background on, you won't be able to see those little dots as much. But right now it looks okay. Now that we've got that out of the way, what we're going to do is we're going to move this one onto the other image. So if you left click and drag it over to this one and then drop it in, you're going to hold Alt to zoom out a little bit. Press Ctrl T to resize it, make it a little bit smaller. And this is the bit where you're going to need to have a guess whereabouts and how big you want to make yourself. So mine is about this big right here. So just a little bit over to here. A little bit smaller. And his feet to go right there like so. And as you can see from the hair, you can't really tell much of a difference with the little dots. They are pretty much gone. The only bit I can see is right here. And this is easily removed if we just get the eraser tool. Hold control, click on the image. Personally, I think the clone tool is going to be a lot better. So if you get the clone tool, change the size to something bigger, and then you want to hold Alt, click on here, and then pretty much copy it over. Now you have to watch out for the edges because it will copy the edges. So we might need to make it a little bit smaller and then copy it like so. Now this bit is a little bit more different because it's lighter on the side. So we just have to try and make this work like so. This bit here is different. Now 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself another image of a hand. So as you can see, this is another baby hand that I have right here. If you'd like to download this one, there'll be a link in the description. You want to drag it into Photoshop, left click on it to unlock it. I'm going to go with the pen tool. So if you click down here and then start off with the first point here, work your way around it like so. and then connect it all up. And now we're gonna create a selection, 0% feathering, press okay, and then press Control J. Get yourself this hand right here, and then move it over to your project. So this is my project right here. What you want to do is also flip it, so if you right click on it and then flip horizontally, you can also tilt it if you left click, and drag the outside areas back in. So it's going to be like this. Go to the razor tool, make it a little bit bigger and then set it on this one. This is the bit where we're going to blend it like this, but we're not gonna need the form. We're gonna hide this one. We're going to go back to the pen tool, go around this one. and just have a guess where it would be and what it would look like. Press OK. We're also going to fix up the bit here. So if we get the clone tool, make it a little bit smaller. Go back on this one. That's looking decent so far. Burn tool down here. So if you right click on the dodge tool and then go down to burn tool and this will pretty much give it a little bit of a texture. So if we just give it on the edge like so, press control D to deselect it. And once again, we're going to select it, but this time we're going to go around it and then just get rid of the background because we don't really need it. And once again, pen tool, just go around it like so hold alt to get rid of it. And pretty much the whole hand, we don't really need it. Make self a selection, press OK, press delete, and then press Control D. We are now going to fix the little bit here. So you want to hold Control, click on here to select it, go to the clone tool, get yourself a copy of the texture nearby, and then just fill it in like so. You want to unhide this one, and then you pretty much want to hold Control T to resize it, and we're going to position it in here. You can even turn down the opacity so you can see what it looked like in the back. Now, another thing that we have to correct is the hand itself. So as you can see, the hand is a little bit thick right at the top and this is unnatural. So to fix this up, the pen tool once again, go down here, click on here, press delete. Control D, hide this one. And then with this hand right here, we're going to move it underneath like so. We're gonna put it back on top and then we we'll remove this form right here. Make selection, press delete, Control D, move this one underneath. We're gonna rename this one. So this one is gonna be called hand. So know which one's which. You wanna get yourself a new layer by clicking on down here. And then on top of this one, call this one tan. So if you double left click on the name, rename it, get yourself the brush tool, go into the colors and select a really bright orange. So for this one, I'm going to change it to D instead. So this one right here. So F F six D zero zero press. Okay. And then pretty much you want to press control and hold it down and then click on the hand. So you select it. And then in the tan layer, you just give it a bit of a tan. Then you press control D to deselect. And then what you want to do is in the effects, change this one to color and then turn it down to 17%, which is right here. Now, right now it's still looking a bit off. 
what we can do is adjust this slightly. You just want to keep adjusting it so you get it just right. The other thing that's a bit off is the actual hand itself. It looks a little bit strange right now. So to fix this, we're going to go to the pen tool and then click on here, click on there, make it go in. So if you hold the left click and curve it and then hold alt and click on it, then go around it, connect it back up, new selection, press OK, and then the actual hand, you press delete. The colors are still a little bit off, but we can always keep adjusting it and try to get it right. So we might go with hue, turn it up a bit. And it's starting to look more like the hand. Hundred and twenty one. Okay, there we go. That looks more realistic now. We want to just remove these as well. So we're just gonna fix it up by going to the hand itself, going to the patch tool, making it smaller by using the square bracket, and then copying some of the color from here to replace it onto there. We also need to go back to tan, give it the color. So the brush tool, make it smaller, select the hand, color on top of it. Press Ctrl D, and then the other one is the actual effect, which we'll need to apply. So if we go to the mask itself, get yourself a white color, and then just put it on top. We still need to fix up the actual color. So let's just remove the tan, go back to the original hand. We're gonna switch over to the clone tool and then do the same. This one's gonna work a little bit more different. So it's actually gonna copy it over. Be a little bit easier. Move it down and there we go. So that is looking a lot better compared to before. You want to go over to the smudge tool, which is right here. So if you right click and go on the bottom one, and then we go over to the finger to sort this out. So the finger is right here. It's part of the image. And pretty much you want to make it smaller and then just smudge it along. So it looks like this. Let's try and fix this tan a little bit more. And put it to 100, there we go. We can always go to the sharpen tool as well, so this one right here, and then just sharpen up the other bits, like here. And there we go. Same as last time, you want to go and get yourself the other hand, move it over to this one, drag and drop, and then you pretty much want to make it smaller. So if you press Control T, drag the corners in and hold Shift to make it smaller. You can rotate it by holding Shift once again and then turning it from the outside, making it smaller. We're gonna put it on top as well so we can see it. And it is just a little bit bigger. So about, we're gonna put it about here. Just a little bit bigger, like so. And there we go. So we're going to move it back a little bit, just about there. Now, same as last time, we have to blend it. What we're going to do is we're going to use the eraser tool and then just rub this in like so. You want to get yourself a new layer and you want to hold control, click on the second hand go to the brush tool, make it a bit bigger, get yourself the same color as last time. So FF 6 D 0 0. Paint it in. Press Control D, get yourself color, press Control, click on it again, get yourself brightness and contrast, turn down the brightness and play about with the contrast.
we can get ourselves the burn tool and then get ourselves the hand, make it a little bit bigger and then just burn the edges a little bit. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hide the second hand. You want to create a group. If you click on the bottom one, click on the top one and create yourself a group, then hide this one and then we're gonna remove this one. Get the pen tool and then just remove the hand. You can even go a little bit more into it if you wanted to or less. Make a selection, press delete, press control D, unhide the other one. And once again, the tan is a little bit off. I'm not quite happy with it. I'm gonna keep messing about with it until it actually looks decent enough. Might need to give it a bit of a shadow on top. Gonna go back to the burn tool. It needs to just be a little bit more on the orange side with this one. And we're gonna create a mask on top of this one. So if you hold control, click on the object, and then click on the mask, we're gonna turn down the opacity so we can see underneath it. And then we're gonna get ourselves the pen tool and then pretty much just select this area right here where we want it to be hidden behind. Go around it, connect it all up, go to selection, press okay. Make sure you are selecting the mask and then just pretty much fill it in with the brush tool or the bucket tool. Press Ctrl D to deselect it. Turn it up a little bit so we can see what we're working with. Next one is this one right here. So what we're gonna do is turn it down once again and then get the polygonal lasso tool and just pretty much go around it like so. So we're pretty much gonna make this bush on top of the actual foot. Make it 100%. We can also make it a little bit bigger for the selection right here. You pretty much left click on it and then go around it and then press control and then connect it. Get the bucket tool, fill it in with black, deselect it. And we need to also remove this patch of grass right there. So if we just toggle the mask by holding shift and clicking on it, it will disable it. We're gonna go to the clone tool and we're just gonna fix up the shoe right here where it's a little bit got patches of grass on top of it. And there we go. So once again hold shift, click on it and then there we go. Now we've put it back. The bush right here is looking a bit strange so what I'm gonna do is take it out by using a white color instead of black on the mask and there we go that's more natural that's more normal there's more of a natural color we're just going to create a group this is the part with the hand what we need to do is we need to first of all hide the person layer and you want to make sure you know how much of the actual building you need. So for me, I've used the guidelines at the top. If you don't know how to do this, you press Control R, this will get you the ruler at the top and then you just pretty much drag these out and use them as guidelines. So now that I've got mine, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the selection tool and I'm just going to select this area right here. Now I'm probably gonna make it a little bit smaller but we can edit this a little bit later on. So once you've got it selected, you want to make sure you're on the background and you want to press Control J. Now that you've got the copy of it, we can just rename it and say something like tower top. Pretty much the next thing to do is slowly remove bits that we don't need. So we're gonna hide this one and we don't really need the background. So first of all, we're gonna use the pen tool and we're just pretty much going to 
do the first bit at the top, so the edges. Okay, so now this is the more tedious part because we're gonna have to individually cut these little pieces out. So to do this, we can always go over to the polygonal lasso tool. This one is a lot easier. So same as pen tool, click once and keep going. And then once you get back to the last one, you just connect it up. So connect it up, make a selection and press delete. Press control D. And once again, just keep doing this until it is all gone. So now that we've done that, we can bring back the background and we can have a look what it looks like. So if we zoom out and have a look with the hand right here, so what you want to do is you want to click and drag it on top of the person. Sometimes you'll get the white outline a little bit, so you just want to correct it. You can either use the eraser tool or any tool you want to. Get yourself the brush tool, create a new layer, and then just go a little bit on top of here. So it makes it look like a shadow. And just turn down the opacity of it. Next up, we're going to get ourselves the plane. So if you left click, drag it into a new area. So since this image is a lot easier to remove the background, what we're going to do is we're going to use the quick selection tool. The quick selection tool will do mine. It won't be as accurate. So as you can see, it's missing a wing, but we can fix this by going to the polygonal lasso tool. And then you just pretty much left click and then add it on to here. You need to make sure that the middle option is selected. So as you can see at the top. So what we need to do is you want to hold alt. So the minus comes up and then you just pretty much left click and this will take it away. So we're working backwards with this image. And then you just pretty much hold control, connect it up. And then there we go. Press control J and then hide this one. And there we go. You got your plane. So we can drag this one onto the background over here. Zoom out a little bit press control T, resize it. So this is where you have to look at the image and have a guess how big it would be. Move it up to the hand right over here. You can also tilt it and we can go down to, let's put it underneath it like so. With the extra detail, you can add it if you wanted to. So one of the things that you can do is make the plane look like it's actually moving. And to do this, we're gonna create ourselves a motion blur. Now we're gonna press control J so we have a copy of it. And then you want to go to filter, go down to blur and then motion blur. Once you've got motion blur, we're going to angle it. So it's right to about there. And then we're going to just make it a little bit more focused. So about 2%, we're not going to give it too much. Press okay. And then another cool trick that you can do is you can press control C again. Once you've got yourself a copy of it, you just pretty much move it behind and this will make it look like it's been moving. But you also need to turn down the opacity so you make it look like it's pictured in the frame. So as you can see, we can do a similar thing to the arm as well. So if we find ourselves this right here and we pretty much, we're going to change this one to red and the arm as well, which is this one and this one too and probably the hand yeah this one as well and there we go in that one as well what you want to do with all of these layers is you select all these press ctrl j we're going to group them and then we're also going to copy this one right here because we need this one once you've got the copy we're going to move it underneath and once again move this one underneath you want to hold ctrl and select both of them press ctrl t and then just move it slightly that way. Okay, now. <clears throat> With group two, we only need the arm. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna convert this one to a small object and then we're only gonna use the hand. So we're gonna cut it right about here. Make the selection, press Control J and delete this one. With this one right here, that's underneath, select this one and then also select that one, press control T and then just move it downwards like so. And this is pretty much just for the motion to make it look like we are reaching for the plane. We don't really need that thumb bit that is right here underneath there. So what we're going to do is use the polygonal lasso tool and just remove it out of the picture. Press delete, control D, 
And now all you gotta do is once again, turn down the opacity so it looks like it's in motion. Pro to about 50% or even less. And then this one to 50 as well it is 34. 34, there we go. If you wanted to, you can also connect these two up by moving this one down here. Group them together by holding shift and clicking on the other one. Convert smart object. And now they are together. I'm going to move it a little bit that way. And <clears throat> go to filter, blur, and then we're going to go to motion blur. And we're going to put it that way. Press OK. Now the other problem is the hand itself isn't blurred out. So we need to blur this by going to this one. Going to the image, getting ourselves the blur tool, which is right here. And then just blurring the arm. You can also use the eraser tool and just make it look a bit more faded on the ends for this one right here. Next up is the shading. So this is what makes the image look realistic. We are nearly done with this image. What we're gonna do is we're gonna group all of these. So go to the first one, go all the way down to this one, create yourself a group. So this is the actual person itself and we've got the background here you want to press ctrl j get yourself a copy convert into a small object go into blending options go to the gradient overlay starting off with this one you want to click on here and turn down the opacity to zero press ok and set this to soft light if you wanted to you can even move this up or down press ok press ok again and then next up, what we're going to do is the shadow. So you want to hold control, click on here to get yourself a selection, create a new layer on top of this one, zoom out a little bit, go to the brush tool, make it bigger, get yourself a black color. And we're just going to add in the shadow. So the arm will be a little bit more darker. You just pretty much want to guess where the lighting is. You want to press control D, go through the effects see which one looks good. So we can either go with soft light or we can just simply set it on normal and turn down the opacity so it looks like it's a little bit darker. You just pretty much mess about with it, see what looks good, see what doesn't. We can do the same thing but with the lighting, so the opposite of this. So once again, hold control, get yourself a light color this time. Go to the brush tool and just brush it on like so. Press control D. We're only going to set this one to about 8%. Doesn't look as good. Okay. And yeah, just keep fixing up the image until you are happy with it. The next thing is we also need a bit of shadow on the Eiffel Tower. So right about here. Now you want to go to the dark color and just paint on like so. You can set this one to soft light. And another thing that you can do, the very last one, is create a fake shadow. So to do this, you press Control J on this one. Move it underneath. Convert this one to a small object, double left click on it, create a color overlay so it's black, press control T. You want to first of all move this downwards like so, and then hold control and drag the corners. With it. If you don't know where the shadow comes from or where the light source is, you can simply look at the image. For example, as you can see down here, it's coming from that way, so shining on that way. Once you're happy with it, double left click, and then once again, turn this down to about 50% or lower. You are now ready to save this, so you can go to File, Save As, and then save it as a PSD, and save one as a PNG. If you wanted to, you can add in the finishing touches by redragging it in and then just add in simple things like brightness and contrast. You can even add like photo filters. If you'd like to see more videos, subscribe to my channel and I will see you all next time. Bye.